Ezekiel Elliott is finally suspended. How will that affect the Cowboys players and running back depth chart moving forward? We'll discuss. Speaking of running back concerns, Matt Forte is out after his big game against Buffalo. Aaron Jones will try and rebound after being shut down by Detroit. And which running back looks like the top replacement for Jay Ajayi in Miami? We'll offer analysis on those questions and more, including the latest key injury news, starting or sitting decisions, and much more as OFN Fantasy starts now. All right, it is Sunday, the 11th of November. Well, no, 12th of November. Boy, time is really flying. And, boy, if you, if you were uh, a college football fan like many of us are, uh, exciting day of college football. Let's hope we have uh, just as much excitement today in the NFL week number 10. So things are starting to get real serious, especially if you're a fantasy football fan. Uh, matter of fact, our trade deadline, uh, I think, is, uh, is it come and gone, guys? Is that it? Is that yesterday? Is that is it? Is that it? No more no more trading in our league. Yeah. Hold on, I had to unmute you because you were. Go ahead, say that again, Dan. You got to roll with who you got. Or that's it. Trade deadline's over. Yep. Yep. All right, that's weak. What's up with that? How many how many times do you guys? I mean, how often do you guys trade? Well, I think the perp. I I think I pulled off two trades this year. I don't do a lot of trading. I, I try to make my bones on the waiver wire. I think people are reluctant to give up quality. I can't tell you how many offers are like, okay, so you're offering me the guys you're about to drop. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. It's like even when you when you when you when you're listening to the analysis on television for real trades, it's like I, I forget which trade it was last week at the deadline, and and one of the analysts was shocked when he goes, you know what, this this actually might actually work for both teams it's like it's like they're surprised that both teams would actually want to make the trade work for each other you know like like every time you break down a trade somebody has to win or lose it's like what is that's not what trading's about trading's about both sides are supposed to get equal value it may not look like it uh, you know on the outside but there's a reason why they want that trade to work for them uh and and explain why it shouldn't always be and that's what i think we always get in fantasy football we get these these guys all the time like you say dan that it's like you know how can i how can i how can i destroy the other guy that's that's my main focus instead of just saying hey what can i do to make that guy's team better and my team better so. Yeah, yeah. No question. I, got, I, I don't know. I got a few of those. I got a few of those offers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, offer me. I know me, people trying to destroy. Trying to take, trying to take every player, every good player on my team for whoever they were going to drop. What are we saying, Dan? I just think people just are are reluctant to give up anything that they ha- perceive to have any value. So instead of saying looking for you know what might be a, a good offer, they're like. Who can I package my garbage to and fool them into taking it and yeah. making it something good? That's yeah. you know, it's not they're out to get others, they're just out to not give anything up. Yeah, that's unfortunate because uh, I I you know, it's what I, I in my other league, I mean we, we trade a lot and but then again, these guys know each other. It's one of those leagues where you know each other, everybody knows everybody. You know, for many years. So it's a lot easier, I guess, if you know people for many years. Uh, to have more trade possibilities, uh, and and I usually I it's usually, it's very rare I go a year without trading in that league. Um, it's just I think it's just part of fun of doing what we're doing. You know, it's just I understand how fun the draft is, um, but waiver wire stuff that can be kind of boring. I mean, trades, man, that that's fun. You know, and I do trade sometimes myself when I know I'm giving up more, but I, I I know I also need to take a chance. I'm like, you know what? I know I'm giving up more, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's not because I'm stupid. It's because I'm willing to, A, do it, and I hope this guy, because I, he's in my league, he's in my league every year, I hope he realizes this, knows that I'm not just, you know, and I know he knows I'm not an idiot, but I hope he realizes this and remembers this, that, hey, I'm willing to give him a little bit more this time around because I'm desperate and I need to take a chance on a, on a specific other position that I'm asking him to bring me back for because, hey, I've got too many injuries. I can't pick up anybody the waiver wire. I have to roll the dice. So that's my story. All right. 
Let's get right to it then. Uh, let's talk about, and we'll get into uh, some of the start sit moves uh, in just a little while. But Ezekiel Elliott, right off the top, uh, Jamal, uh, finally a decision has been made. Uh, has this backfired now? Uh, outside, of course, of the real uh, NFL, has it backfired on a fantasy owner? Because the Zeke, with Zeke out now, that's it, right? I mean, can he come back for your team before the championship? No, I don't, I don't think it's a backfire. He's put up, you know, a bunch of very good weeks. How many now? About nine weeks or eight or nine weeks of uh, of good production. When he was drafted at the time, people thought he was going to get a, you know, a six game or a four game suspension or something. And, uh, you know, I guess it just happens later in the year. So, you know, he went later in drafts anyway. So I think they got it. They got the production that, that, you know, the value that they were supposed to get. Um, so fantasy wise, it's you know, it hurts in the moment. If you're if you're a fantasy team, I know there's a there's a guy in one of my leagues who's I think eight or nine and oh. He's been riding Zeke, uh, and now uh he's not gonna have him. So, you know, it's gonna hurt not having him on your on your fantasy team these coming weeks, but you you got your value. Is he coming so at at this point in time if he were to be out the full six, then that's it? He 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 may be back for the championship game in a fantasy league? That's what it looks like, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, you know there are, there are more appeals. I don't, you know, I'm, this is one of those things. It's not over till it's over. It seems like, and sure. uh, I'm sure they're going to push this another level in the court system, and you know, try to get another ruling. Uh, so you know, we'll see what happens. But if it stands, it looks like you're not going to have him until you know, probably the second or last game in, in your playoffs if you get that far. All right. Uh... What about uh, Thursday's game? Anything impact uh, the game, uh, the post game, uh, Dan? I mean, defensively, of course, Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, but Sherman's out for the year. Uh, so I guess if you have Seattle's defense, that's a bummer. Uh, Dwayne Brown got banged up a little bit, uh, but anything else? I mean, we still learn, we still got nothing from the running game from Seattle, uh, and Paul Richardson wasn't 100. percent That's been most of the season. He's kind of been up and down. So I don't know. Did we learn anything also from the Arizona side with Stanton going down? I don't think a lot of people had high hopes for Arizona's offense before Stanton went down. So. Uh, whatever hopes were there, there are even fewer now. Um, you know, I think Larry Fitzgerald is a volume receiver, so he's still a good start. And, you know, if you have AP, you know, you might want to march him out there based on the matchup, but that's about all you're getting out of, out of Arizona, uh, unless David Johnson makes a miraculous comeback before the end of the season. All right. So, yeah, it looks like Gabbert will probably get to start when we talk next week. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, with that Dallas Atlanta game, nothing has changed with that Atlanta offense. I mean, week in, week out, we keep talking about Steve Sarkeesian needing to be fired. He's not going to get fired, I guess. And Atlanta won't make the playoffs. Uh, but, uh, and, and uh, this just kills someone like me. I have Tevin Coleman in my other the league, Jamal. And okay. He got a touchdown last week, but I, what did they have last week? I think Ryan threw the ball like 40 times, and they ran the ball combined with Freeman and and Coleman like 16. I mean, what in the world is Sarkeesian doing? <laughs> I mean, it, you know, fantasy wise, Atlanta is Atlanta. We know we know what they got. It's just a question if if certain guys pick up production. Ryan, you know, he's starting to play a little better in terms of uh, pr- production. Uh, threw a couple touchdowns last week. Uh, will he play even, you know, it's just a question of how, m- how many fancy points is he going to give you? Is he going to be better than average? S- uh, same with Freeman and Jones, you know, so both, both of the guys, everybody else, you, you know, you're just, you're, you're wishing and praying that they're going to give you something, but Jones and Freeman, they, they even haven't been giving you enough. You just hope that they, their production increases. So, you know, Atlanta is a pretty simple situation. Yeah, and, and I, you probably – because Freeman was a pretty big pickup, right? And the, uh, What was he? Is he a first-round pick or a second-round yeah, pick? He's, yeah, he's a first, first second-round pick. Uh, yeah. So, you know, he's been a disappointment for most guys. I have him at least in one league, so, you know, I'm not all that happy with him. Wasn't People tried to tried to lowball me on trades for him. I wasn't willing to do that. So I still think uh, there's a possibility he picks it up, and I'm hoping he picks it up. But, you know, like you said, he's been a disappointment so far. And all three of those guys, uh, Ryan, Freeman, Jones, you know, haven't, I'm not sure about Jones. He seems to be, you know, from outside looking in, he seems to be 
a little disappointing, but I'm, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he's still putting up points. All right, and Des Bryant uh, looks like he's uh, ready to go from what we hear at this point in time, uh, and that is a later game today. So uh, Des Bryant, Des Bryant, uh, even though it looks like he's ready to go, uh, that's a definite start, right? Um, well, Jamal, I know you have Des Bryant, so you're starting him, right? Yeah, you know, bye weeks and everything. Um, but he's but he's had he's had his last two or three weeks have been pretty good. Um, so yeah, if he's if he's healthy, you start him. All right, Minnesota and Washington, uh, Dan. And we take a look at this game, and uh, I guess now the the Teddy Bridgewater clock is ticking. Uh, we'll see how long that takes for him to get in there, but it looks like he's definitely going to be the quarterback in Minnesota real soon. Uh, and uh, maybe all it takes is a loss today in Washington if that, in fact, happens. Uh, Washington gets back Trent Williams, but Jordan Reed's injured. What a big surprise, Dan. I guess that boosts up Vernon Davis' stock, right? Hey, uh, Vernon Davis is uh, definitely a good streaming start. He's de- produced every time Jordan Reed, almost every game Jordan Reed hasn't played in this season. Um, but he's sort of got a, a bit of a low ceiling. Uh, he's definitely not putting up those Jordan Reed healthy kind of numbers. So temper your expectations. Something, something like four to six catches, you know, sixty to eighty yards is probably you know, the best you're going to get out of Vernon Davis. By the way, has Diggs and and Tayline have, have those guys been good starts every week, like for the last month on average? Or Diggs has been hurt, but. I mean, uh, have you seen a, a, a noticeable difference at all uh, with Keenum definitely in there, especially even if it's during this winning streak? Uh, has, 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 has their numbers gone down or has Taylor's numbers gone down? How, how has it been since they got off to such a hot start? Well, Thielen, Thielen's a start every week. He, he's sort of surpassed Diggs, but that probably has something to do with injury too, um, even though Diggs had that one monster week. But – but Thielen is a pretty consistent start, no matter who's behind center. All right. And Diggs, what's his status, by the way? How's he doing? Jamal, you got him anywhere? Yeah, he's, play, he's playing today. Okay. Um, has know, he been doing all right lately, or how's he been? I haven't really heard of him. You know, I mean, he's, he's, he's coming back off an of injury. This, he's, he's highly rated this week. I took a look around um, at different different uh, opinions on him. Okay. Uh, so he's, you know, he's basically listed as a top 15 guy. So he's pretty much a must start if you have him this week. All right. Uh, let's see. Next up, uh, let's uh, go over New Orleans and Buffalo because there's uh, lots to talk about here. It looks like Clay's coming back. Uh, the word is that it looks like he's ready to go. And Kelvin Benjamin will get his first start. So I have him in our league. And uh, we're playing against each other, Jamal? This week? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, so I've got Kelvin Benjamin going, uh, and uh, I've got my fingers crossed that we'll see something uh, either on par or even better now that he's going to be the man. Uh, but uh, Zay Jones is also out after he has a touchdown for the first time against the Jets. So, so there's a lot going on there with the receiving situation with Buffalo. Uh, and then as far as New Orleans, uh, what about Teddy Ginn? I mean, uh, I'm thinking of possibly starting Teddy Ginn. I've got a decision to make. You tell me, guys. I've got a decision to make between Teddy Ginn going up against the Bills secondary, which you know they've given up yards in the secondary, and it is Drew Brees. Now it's the road, and I and it's in Buffalo, so you got to deal with that, you know, passing game and all. Or Keenan Allen, uh, and I've had Keenan Allen's kind of been a disappointment for me. Uh, he averages basically 10 points a game. That's really what he's done. He's only had two games all year over 14 points in our league. And he's going up against the Jacksonville defense. Is this an easy decision, Jamal, or uh, a difficult one? Well, uh, I think I would go again. I just think he's been hot lately, um, and this is you know this is going over the two you know three four weeks. Yeah. Uh, again, it's produced. He started off slow. Um, obviously, he was with a new team, but with a you know all time great quarterback, and it looks like they finally made a connection. He's been he's gotten to the end zone, and I don't know how many weeks in a row. You probably know better than me. But uh, he's definitely putting up numbers. I actually was thinking about grabbing him in a couple of weeks, in a couple of uh, leagues on on the waiver wire about four or five weeks ago, and I tried to put it off, kept putting it off, and then <laughs> it was too late. Um, he had, you know, he started playing well, and and he was gone. So um, I would ride Ted Ginn, Ted Ginn Jr. out. What about you, Dan? I think you uh, feel the opposite, right? Yeah, I mean, they're look, they're they're close. Uh, I think. Um, Consensus ranks have Keenan Allen somewhere in the low 20s, getting somewhere in the high 20s for wide receiver this week. So, 
you know, it's a bit of a toss up, but I, I'd go with Keenan Allen for the same principle that Jamal has talked about weeks prior, which is you kick yourself when you bench your what's Keenan Allen, your third, your fourth overall pick. Um, and, and he has a huge game, but, uh, you know, it's a little bit less of a bitter pill to swallow. Um, if uh, Ted Ginn outscores Keenan Allen, you started Allen. So I would start Allen. Um, I think he just has, he's just more, uh, He's more of a consistent uh, target, even though Ginn is at a, a hot couple of weeks. But Ginn's hot couple of weeks aren't even surpassing what – see, this is what we talk about with expectations, because Ginn, has, you're not expecting anything. And Keenan, you're expecting the world from. In the end, they've been producing around the same. But you're so frustrated with Allen, you're like, ah, I'm just going to start Ginn. I, I, so I would, I would start Allen. Well, the other thing, too, is, is – um, and, and let's throw this in there. Uh, would you start, and this is one of the situations I'm dealing with again, would you start Philip Rivers or Josh McCown? Well, isn't that crazy? Or we're actually thinking about this. No, it's not crazy. Listen, I, I heard a question this week. Someone was asking, hey, don't laugh. I wasn't asking this, but I heard somebody ask, would you start Josh McCown over Tom Brady this week? Um, I mean, no, sure? come on. That's now that's that's ludicrous. <laughs> well, look, it's about matchups and Tom Brady historically. Yeah, but look at Denver. Look at last Denver. week. Remember, you were talking me out of it, and I'm glad you did. I was able to put Carson Wentz in over Denver, and he actually now, went out there and threw whatever four touchdown passes. Now I'm not advocating this, Greg. I'm just saying <laughs> that it, it was a question. I would, I would seriously consider starting McCown yeah. over Rivers this week because he's got a great matchup at Tampa Bay. Their yes. secondary is in shambles. Yeah. And he's been pretty good. Uh -huh. And on the other side of things, um, you know, Philip Rivers, I like. I, I think he's generally underrated. Um, but he's playing the best defense in the NFL. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't be mad at someone starting the count over Rivers this week at all. Uh, Jabal, uh, you can answer that question. But I also want to ask you, what if, and I'm in this situation this week, what do you do when you've got that situation? Like I have Allen and Rivers. But I also have the Jags defense. Does that, when you are actually thinking about Ginn and Allen and you're kind of, you know, you're going to flip a coin either way or McCown and Rivers, does it make it easier for you to go, you know, I'm really kind of, um, I can go either way. And since I have the Jags defense and I believe in them so much, I might as well go with the other guys because, you know, or, or are you going, well, I'm, let me just go 50-50 because if Rivers and Allen do well and my Jags defense doesn't, then that's good. Or do I go all in? And go, okay, if Jags defense shuts him down, then I definitely made the right move going against those guys. Yeah, I mean, as far as, far as that goes, I mean, you got to, you know, as a fantasy owner, I get that as a, as a as a fan, and that's probably maybe your first reaction. I don't want to have two guys going against each other. But, I mean, you, you're in this to win this. Uh, sure. There's money at stake here. Yeah. You got to separate everything. You just, you know, you take each position on its on its own merit, and you, and you pretend you forget about everything else. So, you gotta just separate all that. You don't, you know, if Jacksonville is better than your other option, who cares? You know, you, you're not even thinking about if you have another player playing against them. You know what I mean? You just gotta, sure. you gotta stay focused as a fantasy owner. That's what, that's what it's about, you know? Uh, as far as the McCown, uh, Rivers deal, I mean, you're right. I mean, I laugh. It, it just sounds funny when you, when you think about it, but McCown has actually had, he's been, you know, surprisingly effective this year. You look at you look at the season totals um, from the league that we're both in. McCown has more fantasy points for the year than Rivers does by yes. about twenty. So yeah. I mean, he's been the better QB. You know, it's, it sounds crazy, uh -huh. um, but it's the truth. So that's another <laughs> same kind of situation. If you just take you take everything else out and, you just, and you're just trying to focus and analyze, you, you probably play McCown. All right. So now, now to just to add to that, quick, Greg, to be sure. fair. Rivers has had a bye, McCown hasn't, and so I'd say they're probably more about equal. And if all things were equal, I would start Rivers. But for me, the difference maker is playing him playing Jacksonville yes. versus playing Tampa Bay. Yeah, if it was a normal, exactly. Yeah, it's that defensive matchup that is the main reason why I'm thinking of starting McCown over Rivers. Uh, if, if it was if it was anything, if it was normal defense, normal defense, it would easily for me be Rivers. I wouldn't even be thinking about it. Uh, but it just, it's like completely, and then Tampa Bay has kind of given up on the season as well. I mean, they're just terrible. 
So um, yeah, that's. Uh, but I do I do feel there is something there with Rivers getting the extra week off to prepare against Jacksonville, and that uh, you know you would hope if you're a Charger fan that that would help. All right, uh, what about this uh, Houston Ram uh, matchup? Uh, what do you do? What did you find out last week? Uh, remember we were talking about not knowing what we would see with Savage Dan. And then all, you know, because they really hamstrung him last year when he started, they were very, very conservative. Uh, we were thinking, okay, maybe that's how they'd play him now. Uh, and even though his numbers definitely were inflated because they were trying to come back there at the end, the fact is, you know, he threw a lot of passes and he wasn't very good. What did he complete? Like 45 or less than 45% of his passes, which is downright terrible, especially against the Colts. So it's time to panic, right? Uh, not that I don't think that you should not start Hopkins, but uh, is Hopkins the only guy that you would start on Houston? Hopkins and, and Lamar Miller. Um, I, I mean, if you have to start Will Fuller, you know, a lot of guys on by. But I have I I haven't dropped Will Fuller yet because I, I still you know I'm hoping that maybe they can make something happen and uh, you know chemistry wise before the season's up and 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 mainly there haven't been better guys to grab but I'm not starting him anymore um, so yeah I think you know Hopkins um, is definitely Savage's security blanket he is just peppering him with passes as he was in the first game of the season before he was taken out for Deshaun Watson so. You are safe starting Hopkins, and, you know, obviously Miller's still the workhorse um, in spite of suspicions that Foreman would take over for him. That hasn't happened. So um, those are the only two guys, though, on Houston I'm starting. And uh, I wouldn't expect things to get better this week against the Rams, that's for sure. All right. Uh, and uh, you have Hopkins, right, Jamal? No. But, I, but I mean, based on Hopkins' performance, uh, last week, I would, you know, I think he, you'd have to, you have to start him. I mean, he's a high draft pick. He's a, you know, I mean, obviously a talented wide receiver. If he had even a decent quarterback, he gives you points. And, and he showed last week with Savage, even with Savage being a terrible quarterback, um, he can still, he still has to throw it somewhere. And even if he just throws it up to Hopkins, there's a chance that Hopkins can have a big game. So I think you, you keep Hopkins in there. Okay. Yeah, in our league, uh, Dan's got uh, Hopkins. Uh, all right. So, uh, what about Robert Woods? Uh, would you start Woods this week uh, over? I'll give you a couple of uh, different receivers: uh, Kenny Stills and Devontae Adams. Yeah, I think I, I think you go. Yeah. Woods has been, you know, I'll let Dan talk about this too. But Woods has been, uh, you know, a major part of that high-powered Rams offense for like the past four or five weeks and people are just now catching on. Um, and it doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Um, and Houston, Houston pass defense, I think is ranked 21st in the league. So it's not like, you know, they're that good against the pass. I think you got to go wood there, like, you know, against those other two guys. What do you think, Dan? Yeah. But, you know, I temper your expectations there. Cause you know, I don't think you're going to get uh, two touchdown games out of him regularly as you did last time out. And I think what you can more count on from him is that sort of consistent, you know, six, five, six catches, 60, 80 yards, kind of like what I was talking about with Vernon Davis earlier. Um, he's been that, but you know, you have these wild cards of Cooper Cup and Sammy Watkins that, you know, one of them on a given week could have a big week. Um, it sort of, uh, it diminishes the, the ceiling a bit for Woods, but I, I definitely think he is, a, a He's a reliable, you know, wide receiver three, uh, maybe low end wide receiver two at this point. All right, uh, Green Bay, Chicago. A couple of things here. Uh, are is it time to panic uh, with guys? Do you give Jordy Nelson and Aaron Jones one more week? I know Jones was shut down last week, uh, and Jordy Nelson, of course, hasn't done anything since Hundley's taken over, Dan. So, what do you do? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, definitely start those guys this week. Uh, but if they don't play well, it's time to panic, right? Yeah, I mean, I you know, I think it was <laughs> it was time to panic probably the second Rodgers uh, went down. But um, yeah, I think you got to keep running those guys out there um, because you know, and you just haven't we haven't had enough time to be sure um, either way, and you're probably unlikely to have a better guy to start than Jordy Nelson. Aaron, Aaron Jones is a little bit of a different different case because um, now it looks like he's in a bit of a committee with Ty Montgomery. So, um, 
and and playing at Chicago is not going to be easy for them. That that defense has been stout. So, you know, it's probably going to be a tough matchup if you have better options. I'd go with them. But Jordy, I definitely am still starting, and Aaron Jones, sort of depending who else you got. Yeah, I I look at the, what happened last week, Jamal, with uh, with Jones, who I haven't in, in my other league, in Montgomery. With you know, when if they're going to get behind and play catch up, I think you're going to see more Montgomery. Uh, in the beginning of games, I definitely think they're going to want to try to run the ball with Aaron Jones. But, yeah, I can only give Aaron Jones one more week. If he gets shut down again, I, then I, I, yeah. I definitely can't start him the next week since I have other running backs. Uh, and what, what yeah. about Montgomery or, or even Cohen? What do you do with those guys? Would you start those guys this week? I mean, I'm not starting any of those guys. I'm, I'm scared of all the Green Bay guys. Uh, Hundley hasn't shown he can do anything. Their offense, your, your favorite coach, McCarthy, hasn't figured anything out in terms of getting the offense going. Um, I'm in the 10 team league. I guess if you're in the 12, 14 league team, uh, team league, I'm sure you probably have to start Jordy Nelson. Um, but in a 10 team, I'm in a 10 team league and I'm starting Kelvin Benjamin and Diggs over, uh, Jordy Nelson. Uh, those are decent options. Um, if you have options like that, uh, Cone, I'm, I'm, you know, if, if you had to start him in a deeper league, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. He has been, even that he has a couple of games in the last few weeks where he's gotten one or two touches, but that one or two <laughs> that one or two touches has resulted in a touchdown. Um, so I mean, if you can keep that up, it, it seems like a tough percentage to keep up. Um, that's fine, but his but his role is definitely diminished. I know he's playing against Green Bay, but you know if you have any any options that, that get more looks, I would I would go that way. All right, uh, a few more uh, before we, uh, we 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 call it a show. Uh, Jets and uh, they're playing Tampa, of course. Forte is banged up, uh, and uh, and and I'm not. I'm hearing some pretty you know bad. Uh, well, if you're a big Forte guy, of course you have him on your team after what happened last week. Uh, all of a sudden, it doesn't look good. He may miss more than a week. Who knows? And then if he, you know if he does come back, he's got that running back situation there with Powell, who's better than him anyway, Dan. Uh, so, uh, I, since I'm deep at running back, I dropped him and, and, and took a chance with Darren McFadden. Why not? Because we're going to find out exactly what happens with McFadden and Morris. So I guess that's a couple of things to, to, to talk about here is, is the jet backfield situation is Powell definite first start, uh, and also McFadden and Morris, which way would you go, uh, this week? Well, definitely Powell is a great start this week. No doubt. Uh, I think he'll be in the top 10. Um, and I don't mind dropping Forte because they're about to go into a buy. I don't think anybody's jumping to pick pick him up. Um, so you might even be able to grab him back if you decide you want to. If if, if DMC doesn't do anything today, which and which is sort of you know who knows who knows exactly what's going to happen um, with the Dallas backfield. But I, I don't have high hopes for McFadden. Um, I think you know the safest bet is definitely Alfred Morris. Um, but you know there's definitely a lot of buzz about Rod. Smith and you know he is the young guy so you know I wouldn't be surprised if you have an extra roster spot I would try to I, I grabbed him in a couple leagues where I could um, but Morris is the only person I'm trusting um, for now he's the only one I would start now uh, do you agree with that Jamal yeah no I agree, yeah, I agree totally with that okay um, I mean you know running back situation you know it's such a tough you know this this you know so lean on the waiver wire, I think you do have to take a chance on McFadden if you have a roster spot, just in case um, he actually gets, uh, you know, some, you know, the opportunity to do something there. And if he has anything left in the tank, I think. So I think it's a decent pickup this week, just to see. But I, but no way, obviously, you start him this week, and and uh, it's just, a, you know, it's just a wish and a prayer. Uh, what would you do with uh, the Indianapolis running backs uh, this week, Jamal Mac Gore? Uh, if you could, if you can, I would sit them both. Uh, but if you had to, if you have to play one of them, I would play Gore. Uh, and I've been a guy who's been high on Mac, in, you know, in, the, in that comparison the last few weeks. But Gore clearly, uh, you know, they're trusting him again, uh, giving him more carries. I think he out touched um, Mac by a good, you know, ten fifteen last week. So I think you got to go Gore. They do have a tough matchup regardless against the run this week. Okay. Um, so we'll see. But uh, I would definitely sit Matt. All right. Uh, and, uh, Dan, what about uh, last week we were – since you had uh, Damian Williams and I had Drake, we were wondering what exactly what was going to happen in the Miami game. What did we find out? And what about this week? 
Well, I mean, you know, we found out they're both viable. I mean, you know, Damien Williams, I, I believe, outscored Drake. That was mainly because he was the one, as we expected, that was catching the ball as, in addition to running it. But they're definitely running back by committee. And they're both, you know, viable starts looking ahead. But I wouldn't start either of them this week in Carolina. Not if you got other options. All right. And uh, by the way, uh, Taylor Decker returns for Detroit. So uh, we'll see what that does for Detroit's offense. Uh, that should definitely help him out. Uh, you do anything with Martellus Bennett now, uh, Dan? He was in New England? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's just, you know, uh, New England hasn't demonstrated um, that they're going to give looks, significant looks to a second tight end this season. Dwayne Allen's been there all year, hasn't done much. Um, Martellus Bennett, you know, if obviously if something were to happen to Gronk, if you own Gronk and you, uh, you know, you want to roster him as an insurance policy, if you have the space on your roster, that's fine. But uh, I definitely wouldn't be starting him. All right. And uh, T.Y. Hilton's a game time decision. So uh, that is something that, it, that it's simple. If he starts, you play him. If he doesn't, you don't. Right, guys? Right, Jamal? Yeah, I think, I think so. Unless you have... Uh, pretty good options at wide receiver. And I think uh, Sanders, Amendola, Marquise Lee, and Delaney Walker are all supposed to play as well. Uh, anybody else uh, that we left out, guys, before uh, we call it a show? Don't think so. All right. Yeah. It, it's uh, it, it's not, not a whole lot going on this week, uh, but we will definitely find out a lot more as we get closer. How many more weeks before the playoffs begin? Four. Let's see, week 14, right? 14, 15, yeah, Jamal? Week, week 14. Some, some of our leagues week start in week 14. Okay, so four more to go. All right. And just, uh, just two weeks of playoffs in our league? Yep. Okay. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back again, of course, uh, next Sunday and every Sunday here talking fantasy football with Jamal Murphy and Dan Weinrich. Uh, don't forget to check out our on-demand shows following every live broadcast on our YouTube and iTunes pages on the Prime Sports Network. You can read Jamal Murphy's fantasy content at rlets.com. With the best NFL and college football depth charts are located in the industry. Follow us on Twitter at PrimeSN. We'll see you tomorrow for another Arlets Football Network program as we recap the weekend in pro and college football and much more right here on the Arlets Football Radio Network. We should never be afraid to die